Good morning. Today on Business Success in Six with Stacy, I have Lindsay Nolchek here from Nolchek's Meets in Thorpe, Wisconsin. Lindsay, thanks for jumping on. Hey, thank you for having me, Stacey. It is my pleasure. So today we are going to learn all about Nolchek's Meet and your rich history, as well as your amazing meets. Is that okay if I ask you some questions? Let's go ahead and do it. All right, here we go. When people ask you how you describe Nolchek's Meet, how do you describe it? So the black and white of it is that my family has been crafting award-winning ham, bacon, and sausage products for 71 years using recipes that were developed and acquired by my grandfather back in the early stages of our business. Um, our products are available in our retail store, downtown Thorpe. We also have a website where people can order from. We ship all over the United States, the 48, lower 48. Um, and we've been shipping since the mid nineties before we even had a website. So we're really good at that and very dedicated group of individuals who support us that way. And we also do some limited wholesale distribution. So that's the basic of it. Um, but what I like to talk about is, you know, we see a void at null checks meets that exists between commodity and high end niche product. And we feel that our products are available at an approachable price point with a story that reflects the quality and our family and our tradition of what we do. So it's really awesome to be able to provide those products to people from all demographics of all backgrounds and allow people to really connect and create memories through shared food experiences. It is absolutely wonderful. And it's wonderful that you make it available and have been able to make it available for so long. So you talked a little bit about your story. So what were your plans or your family's plans when the business started and how have they changed? So my great grandfather purchased the business as the Thorpe Locker Plant and Soda, Soda Fountain back in the late 40s. Um, his intent was to take it and, you know, flip it and make a profit on it. And then my grandfather decided to return to the business in 52 and started making the recipes and developing um, different sort of recipes for our products. And um, my father and my uncle purchased the business from their parents in 93. And then I came back in 2014, so it'll be nine years this April. And when I came back, my main focus was to really hone in on getting our processes and procedures on paper so we could bring more team members in and, you know, continue that continuity of our core values of customer service and the tradition of crafting quality product with attention to detail. Um, we transitioned from state to federal inspection in 2017, which was a huge accomplishment for us. So we are a USDA uh, inspected facility with our federal mark of inspection. And in 2019, my cousin Chad came back, which would be my uncle Kelly's son. And I purchased my father's portion of the business and moved forward with expanding our online sales, focusing on our brand messaging, and really developing a foundation for us to go forward from this point. Oh my gosh, congratulations. That's an incredible story. And Thank I you. want to highlight too, that the importance that you, when you started creating and writing down those procedures, just it's so important that consumers really know what they're getting. And they, once they find a great product, if you have those policies and procedures down, they're going to want to keep coming back. Is that the experience you've had as well? It is. And I think it allows for a business to create, you know, a unified message that you can then communicate to customers and fans and the public. And that's something really important because, you know, there's so much misinformation and excessive information and, and claims and all of these kinds of things surrounding food, you know, food and meat is very polar are very polarizing industries. And it's so awesome to have all of those things, you know, honed in and focused and a, and a focus on them. So then we can engage in discourse with customers and explain the why and the where it comes from and why we run our business the way we do with honesty and transparency, because that's really important to create those connections. Absolutely. That's so fascinating. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. so what is the biggest way you impact the community? You know, I think not just us, and this is businesses of all sizes in, in all communities throughout the country, but businesses contribute to the local tax base. And not only do they do that, but they also employ people who live in the communities in which they work. And that's so important because, you know, the impact that that has then on other businesses with spending money there and, you know, 
patronizing other people. It all kind of just works as this this web that you know people really work together to accomplish more. And I think another way that you know we impact our community is that we bring people to our community because people travel here specifically to shop with us. And we kind of have a cult-like following with our customers. Um, people will travel from Minneapolis, the La Crosse area, Madison, to specifically come and buy our product because we're not available in a larger market. And it's awesome to be able to interact with those customers and share all the amazing things that our rural agricultural community has to offer. You know, cheese makers, um, greenhouses, restaurants, boutiques, you know, wineries, all of these things that, you know, people just really don't think that small rural communities have to offer. Mm -hmm. So it's fun to see the looks on their faces when you explain all of that and get them excited about visiting other places. Absolutely. Very, very exciting. So what is one challenge that you have faced that other business owners could learn from? I know you, you know, you've been in business a long time and then you also went through COVID. I'd like to actually specifically ask about COVID. Did your business increase or decrease during that time? You know, COVID was hard for everybody and our business was very fortunate that, you know, we thrived. Um, it was very busy and it was a little out of control at first, but you reined that in and figured it out. Um, but regarding online sales, I mean, the past three, four years, our online sales have grew 300%. Wow. And as a business, you know, we really were fortunate and we recognized how fortunate we were that we had been shipping already. I could not have imagined having to develop all of that after COVID hit. So for us, we had our systems in place and our team knocked it out. Um, so that was, you know, a really big challenge. And especially when there were so many unknowns and so much information out there, it really um, challenged us to focus on how we were going to get through it together as a team. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I think with that, another challenge that we faced, you know, coming out of COVID in the past three years is, you know, there's so much going on and there's so much of it is outside of the scope of our control as individuals and as businesses, you know, things like regulatory oversight, you know, government, supply chain, the labor force, you know, we may not be able to directly impact those things, but they directly impact us. And it can be very overwhelming and, you know, very tangible in how it affects us. And I think the one important thing is to learn to humble yourself to ask for help. Yes. Um, it is so hard to do that sometimes as business owners, but you can't be an expert at everything. And I realized that early on, but even more so in the past few years, and we've been so fortunate to surround ourselves with people that not only believe in us as a business, but as individuals. So it's really awesome. And I think that's one thing is humble yourself to ask for help. That is such excellent advice. And that, I mean, inside business and outside of business, right? We need to be, we have other people around us for a reason. Oh, we get amen. Hands so. down. Um I think the personal side of it too, you know, finding those people that challenge you and are there for you and want you to do the best. It just relationships hands down are so important. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> so what does the future look like for Null Check Meets? Do you have an exit plan? <laughs> I'm too young for an exit plan. <laughs> no. Um, you know, as we've gone through the past few years, we've really realized that we're across in excuse me, we're at a crossroads in our business. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as we look forward to the next three to five years and how we want to take our brand and our, our vision is really to become a regional destination and a regional brand by building on our existing following and, you know, being able to bring people to our community and create something that highlights our agricultural you know, history and the legacy of what we're doing here. Um, I think that's really important, you know, and I think despite all the unknowns, you know, now more than ever that our strengths and ability to pivot and adapt along with the perseverance and dedication is going to get us through whatever comes in the next three to five years. So we're looking forward to that. That was very exciting. I'm looking forward to it too. Huh. It sounds tasty. <laughs> Thank you. Um, all subjects open. What inspires you most? I would have to say hands down my faith. Um, 
it's such an integral part of everything that I approach, not just as a business, but personally, you know, having my faith and trusting that I'm using my time and talents that I've been blessed with to the best of my abilities Mm -hmm. to become the best version of myself. So I can take that and, you know, build that not just in my professional life, but as well as personally. And I think that transitions into being inspired by the people. And it goes back to that, you know, I know such amazing human beings that have persevered and come out on top and are just so amazing in what they do. And it's so humbling to know people like that, to inspire you. And that's what's going to get us through this, no matter what happens is the relationships. Absolutely. Yeah. And you inspiring them in the process of them inspiring you. I can tell that. Um, so if somebody wants to get in touch with you, get in, get some Noel checks meets, what is the best way for them to do that? Uh, you can always stop at our retail store, downtown Thorpe, Wisconsin. And we also have a wide variety of our products available at our website, noelcheckmeets.com. We are on Instagram and we are on Facebook. So that's the way you can find us. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time today. Good luck with 2023 in the next three to five business years. Thank you, Stacey. Appreciate it. Take care. It's my pleasure, Lindsay. Bye. Bye.